if you are an international medical graduate and you quite don't know what route to take to practice abroad then i will advise you watch this video because this is specifically for you Hello people, welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Pepper. I'm a medical doctor here in the UK. I do videos for international students and international medical graduates who are transitioning to work in the UK. Today, I'm gonna be doing a special request video, one of the most asked for on my social media page about PLAB and USMLE. So I know that if you are an international medical graduate and you quite don't know exactly what route to take outside of your country to practice abroad, most likely your options will be PLAB or USMLE. So I'm gonna take time to discuss these two options extensively. And, and if you are just watching this channel for the first time, please subscribe if you like the content, hit on the subscribe button on the lower right hand corner and also tap on the bell notification so you'll be the first to know when there's a new video. All right, now let's get straight into business. So we're talking about PLAB and USMLE separately, so we don't mix things up, so we'll get the best out of this video. PLAB is Professional Linguistics Assessment Board exams. For now, it is still PLAB, and in 2022, it's most likely will change to the UK MLE, which is the United Kingdom Medical Licensing Exam. But for now, it is still PLAB. So PLAB is the exams that qualifies you to get a GMC registration, which is a General Medical Council of the United Kingdom registration, which allows you to practice as a medical doctor in the United Kingdom, either to get a normal non-training job or to go straight into training in the United Kingdom. USMLE on the other hand is United States Medical Licensing Exams that qualifies you to apply to go into training in the United States of America. So these are two exams for two different countries. So I'm going to take them one after the other. Now let's talk about PLAB. The PLAB exams is in two parts, PLAB 1 and PLAB 2. First of all, for you to be eligible to take the PLAB exams, you need to have passed an English exam, which is IELTS, which is International English Language Test System or the OET, Occupational English Test. And there is a required minimum score for you to obtain before you can qualify to sit for the PLAB exams. On the other hand, for USMLE, you don't necessarily need an English language exams for you to sit for the exams. So, but for PLAB, PLAB 1 and PLAB 2. PLAB 1 is a multiple choice question exams written in paper form in the United Kingdom and, and some other countries abroad. So you have to check to see the countries that are listed to conduct the PLAB exams. PLAB 1 exams is about 180 questions in three hours. PLAB 2 is taken after PLAB 1 exams and PLAB 2 is an objective structured clinical examination type of question and it is written for now only in the United Kingdom, mostly in Manchester and sometimes in London as well. PLAB 1 is written about four times in a year in the United Kingdom but twice abroad. PLAB 2 is written almost every fortnight in the United Kingdom, sometimes once a month. The PLAB exams are only taken when you are already a medical doctor. So the eligibility for PLAB, PLAB exams is your primary medical qualification. So you can't take PLAB whilst you are still a medical student, unlike the USMLE, which will come to later. In terms of preparation, one month to six months 
should be enough for you to prepare for club one exams it basically depends on how long you've left medical school how in touch you are with clinical knowledge but and also how busy you are with your time and your schedule but if you put in if you are studying every day for about eight hours one month should be enough for you to prepare for PLAB exams, for PLAB 1 exams specifically. I did PLAB 1 in less than a month, so I'll be giving, doing another video subsequently to explain how you can practice for a month to get ready for PLAB 1. But for now, 1 to 6 months should be enough for you to prepare for PLAB 1 exams. For PLAB 2, you need a minimum of 4 to 6 weeks preparation and it's advisable sometimes for you to attend a preparatory course on how to go about PLAB 2. The maximum allowed attempts for PLAB 1 and PLAB 2 is 4 attempts. So if you fail, if you are unable to succeed at the first attempt, you can keep trying until the fourth attempt. And after the fourth attempt, if you still haven't cleared your exams, you can apply for concession or consideration to see if you can take it a fifth time but normally four attempts is the maximum number of attempts for the PLAB exams and your PLAB exams is valid for two years so what that means is that after doing your PLAB exams you need to go on to the next phase of the exam within two years if that makes sense the same two years apply for your IELTS I forgot to mention that earlier so when you've passed your IELTS or your OET you are supposed to progress to do your PLAB exams within two years if you don't and your IELTS expires you need to take another exams another IELTS before you can apply for the PLAB exams when you've passed your PLAB exams then the next stage is to do a GMC registration and also between the time of passing your PLAB two exams and doing your GMC registration is the maximum allowed time is two years so meaning that after two years of passing your PLAB 2 exams you should have done your GMC registration otherwise you probably have to go back to the whole cycle all over so now let's talk about the cost for PLAB before you are eligible to take the PLAB exams you should have done the English language exams which is IELTS or OET IELTS costs you about 160 OET costs you about 350 pounds after that you go to PLAB 1 PLAB 1 is about 230 to 250 pounds it keeps changing with the exams but it's usually between 230 to 250 pounds after PLAB 1 then you register for PLAB 2 PLAB 2 costs about 875 pounds when you've passed PLAB 1 and 2 you are now eligible to do EPIC verification which is the electronic portfolio of international credentials verification where you have to verify your primary medical qualification from your country with the GMC and that will cost about 200 pounds after you've done the EPIC verification then you do the GMC registration GMC registration depends on the number of years that you have graduated from medical school. If you have less than five years, if you are applying for GMC registration when you are less than five years as a graduate, it's about 156 pounds. But if you're more than five years post graduation, it is about 406 pounds. So other financial involvements for the PLAB exams will also include, especially for PLAB 2, uh, your flight and your visa arrangements to attend a course and also to take the exams like I said earlier the exam is taken only in the United Kingdom but I can't put a cost to that one because the circumstances are individual based and also depends on your country uh, but for accommodation in the UK for the period of your course which will be for about four weeks you will be spending about three to five hundred pounds for accommodation on the average you should be spending about 200 pounds for feeding for a month and for transportation around where you're doing your course you will be spending about 20 to 60 pounds for the period of the course the course fee varies depending on what academy you want to attend 
but in general it's usually between 400 to 600 pounds so in total you will be spending about 3200 pounds excluding your flight and your visa arrangements all through the process of doing your english language test up to plab one plab two epic verification gms registration and to cap it all if you keep applying for jobs as many as possible with a fine cv and everything properly done within three to six months you should land yourself a good job in the uk all right now let's talk about the us mle as i mentioned earlier the us mle is the united states medical licensing exam that is what qualifies you to apply for residency training in the united states it is the only way to get into residency training or to get to matching to get into residency training in the united states however in the united kingdom there are other means of working as a doctor in the uk apart from the plab route i've done several videos about that you can check uh, my previous videos to see uh, the various options available apart from the plab route the only difference is that plab is the commonest and most popular route of working in the uk so for us mle you don't necessarily need an english test to qualify to apply for us mle the other difference is that us mle has three steps unlike the plab exams which has two steps or plab one and plab two us mle has got the stage step one step two cs and ck and step three you can take step one and two whilst you are still a medical student and you can even take step two before you take step one of the us mle unlike in plab you can't take plab exams except you are already a medical graduate or except you are already a doctor and you can't take plab 2 before plab 1 it has to be plab 1 before plab 2 unlike the us mle where you can take step 2 before step 1 that makes sense us mle step 1 is a computerized multiple choice question exams us mle step 2 is a clinical knowledge exam which is also computerized multiple choice question and the us mle step 2 cs which is the clinical skills is an oski based kind of exam and step 3 is a multiple choice kind of exam also computer based the difference in terms of scores for us mle and plab is that plab exams there is a minimum required score for you to pass and when you get that score you have automatically passed unlike in the us mle where your the higher your score the higher your chances of getting matched because of the long process of the us mle it can take up to two to three years depends on your commitment depends on your readiness and your uh, financial muscle as well it can take up to two to three years for you to go through all the process and the stages from us mle step one to step three and the validity for us mle is seven years unlike for plab which is two years but now let's talk about the financial costs for the us mle bear in mind that what i'm giving you is the estimate the things the estimate for the financial cost however this keeps changing and also you you have to check the website to get the latest information in terms of cost and i'm also not going to talk about flights and visa costs because these are subjective and based on the individual and also the country you are coming from i will be giving you the cost of the essentials for you to prepare ahead of time before you can do the us mle you need to do a, an ecfmg verification so that is basically an educational commission for foreign medical graduates so you need to do that verification and ecfmg will cost you about 145 dollars to register for step one 
it is about $965 for step 1 US MLE. Step 2, the clinical knowledge stage is $965 as well. Step 2, the clinical skills is about a is about $1,600 and step 3 is $895. So far, that is about $4,590. When you've passed all these stages, then you have to apply for matching. And to apply for matching, you do that using your ERAS token, which is about $130. Then bear in mind, you still have to do EPIC verification and EPIC verification is $215. And you have to pay for each credential that you are verifying separately you pay this amount by the number of credentials after that because the usml is, is regional based most times so you have to also pay for state verification of your documents and the cost is about 50 dollars then when you've gone through all this you now apply for matching and to apply for matching is about $300 to $4,000. It depends on how many programs that you are applying for matching. So to increase your chances of getting residency training in America, it's advisable for you to apply to as many programs as possible. So that will keep increasing the amount you're paying for each application. On the average, people apply up to 10 training programs and that will cost you about $4,000. After this, then you have to do the national matching as well. For you to do the national matching, you need to set up an NRMP account and that will help you to match and also to rank your preferences. And to set up that account, you need about $100 to do that is to increase your chance of getting matched. So what people are advised to do is to apply for clinical observership. And to apply for clinical observership, you can apply to someone you know in a hospital or private base or government base and get two to three months of supervision or even a month or even two weeks sometimes if you haven't got anyone you know then you have to apply personally and pay and that will cost you about two thousand pounds to apply for clinical observership a month so in total for usmle from the beginning up to the end until you get matched you will be spending up to a minimum of eleven thousand dollars that has nothing to do with your accommodation, your flight, your logistics, your visa, and all of that. Compared to about £3,000, which you will be spending for club. The difference is that we all know that people who are doing residency training in America get better pay than those who are doing training in the UK but you have to consider your individual circumstances and the support you have your financial ability before you before you make all these decisions and one thing i should say before i end this video is in terms of level of difficulty for the two exams the usmla i haven't done usmla before but from what i hear the usmla is a bit tougher than the plab that doesn't mean the plab is not a hard exams the thing is, for an average medical student who have gone through medical school successfully, you should be able to sit and pass the PLAB exams with good preparation on time, compared to the USMLE which will require you to do extra study to pass. But all in all, it has to be based on your preference, your decision, your ability and what prospects you have for yourself. All right. I hope this has helped you to have a general overview of these two pathways, these two exams on what you want to do. And if you feel there's something I've left out or if there's something you want me to talk about or there's any contribution you have to make, please do that in the comment section. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.